Hello everybody and welcome back to Aviation 34L. GeoFS just tweeted yesterday that their first draft of their radio navigation is live in the beta 3.3, so we're going to be taking our first look at this today. Alright, just to access it, you'll go onto the GeoFS website, then push fly on the 3.3 beta, so let's get right into it. So right now I'm starting out here at Fresno Airport, out in California. So to access the radio navigation, you'll just click on this radio navigation button. You can find it on the right side of your screen. In order to actually use this, you'll want to click on the autopilot where you can see you can choose between heading and navigation autopilot. So let's go ahead and take off right now. All right, so now we're heading away from the airport. We're gonna open up the nav panel. You can see here it looks a little bit different. So these little indicators here indicate that there is a VOR there. These indicators indicate that there is an ADF. And in order to tune into any of these, you're going to want to click on it. And then you can push on the yellow button and that will set it right into your radio navigation panel. As you can see here, the frequency was just tuned in and now we have the information coming from the DME. You may have also seen that right down here on our little instrument that it is no longer centered. We can now drag the OBS dial to adjust it to figure out what radio we are in relation to the VOR. So we'll now we'll want to stop it right in front of it to make sure it's nice and centered. It looks like it's about 158. So what you're going on to do in order to figure out what radio you're actually flying away from them is you will go ahead and take the opposite of this which is currently looking to be about 340 so then we will rotate this around so now it will say 2 and now we can go ahead and turn on the nav here and it will fly us straight towards it now you can see in the nav panel we are starting to head right towards it on the radio we just assigned it to. Now you can see we are approaching the VOR. It still says that we are heading towards it. And very soon we'll see it underneath us. I think that might be it, but we'll see in a moment. Oh, no, it's this. We're about to pass it. And when we do pass it, this will no longer indicate 2 because we are now over it. You can also see that the nav selection on the autopilot just turned yellow. That's because we have lost... Uh, we lost communications with it. We will soon get back into communication range with it once we pass back over it. And we will be flying on the opposite radial of what we were just on. Alright, there we go. Now it says we are coming from it and we got our data back. So that's how you tune in and fly a radial. Alright, now I'm back at Fresno spawned in, in a 737. You might be able to notice how our indicator for the VOR is now different. Alright, so now we're going to take off with this aircraft now. Now that I've engaged the autopilot, I'd just like to mention that, I don't know something about this update, but when I have my joystick installed and I turn on the autopilot, my joystick still has full control over the throttle, and I really think that should get fixed. Anyway, moving on, we're now going to do the same thing we did with the VOR as with the Cessna, so I'm going to open up the nav panel. You can see right here where our VOR is, we're already tuned in. So now to adjust the dial, you're going to want to click and drag this, and this will adjust it to whatever thing it is. Then you're going to want to make sure that the yellow line comes straight with the rest of the thing, and because as we're traveling 
away from it. We're going to be constantly changing what radio we're flying on. So here's where another problem I just I've experienced with this update is. So right now I just paused it. We are currently flying on the radial that we, the radial of two seven zero. Wait, no, two eight zero. But you can see here if I draw a line right here in between these two, we're actually flying at a radial of about two six zero. So I just need to mention that for the aircraft with this type of VOR instrument, it's reading opposite. So for example, for flying at a radial, the 270 radio, it'll be fine, but then if we go on to the real life 280 radio, it'll read 260, and if we go on the current one that we are on about right now, we are currently passing through the, two, the 260 radio, but it's reading 280. So that really needs to be fixed as well. The one last feature I'm going to be checking out today with the new radio navigation GFS is the ILS and localizer autopilot. So now we're going to start our approach into Las Vegas. I'm going to adjust the autopilot to get us there. All right, once we start our approach, we can go ahead up to the airport, click on which ILS we want to tune into. You will see right now we are out of range, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and tune to it anyway. Okay, we just saw that our DME information just popped up, so that means we are now in range, so I'm now going to select the nav autopilot. You'll see now the airplane's going to take full control of itself. I'm also going to start reducing speed and adding flaps because the autopilot doesn't do that to prepare for landing. Right now, taking a look at the instrument over here, you can see these white ticks on the side. This is representing the glide slope. If it's higher than the center, then that means you are below the glide slope. And if it's lower than the center, that means you are above the glide slope. So you're going to want to adjust to get onto the glide slope if you're doing this without the autopilot. All right, now as we get super close to the airport, you're going to want to turn off the autopilot and land it by yourself because once you get too close to the ILS, the autopilot starts acting weird, so I'm going to plug back in my joystick. And now I'm going to land it. So here we go. So there you have it, the ILS and localizer approach with the autopilot. I'm now going to stop the airplane for you and just sum up the video now. I just think that this update is a really cool one, although it might take a bit of time to get used to the new instruments. I do think that there are a couple changes that need to be made before making this the one and only version available to the public. But it overall does seem like a really nice update, and I would totally recommend you check it out right now. 
Other than that, that does conclude this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good rest of your day, and bye.